I don't know what the hell Adidas was thinking, but they had to issue an apology for a very distasteful, and as they said, an inc they are incredibly sorry, after the company sent a tone deaf email to Boston Marathon participants on Tuesday, one day after the 2017 Boston Marathon. So in their email, there's the subject. There's the a subject at the very top. Uh, congrats, you survived the Boston Marathon. Now buy our clothes. So it's even worse. I think it's even worse that. It's, uh -huh. Look, by the way, so there's. I like that there's the, the internet response. The, by the way, that was my response. Was it was no, 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 no. Um, I swear, sometimes brands in like marketing departments are actually being run by Michael Scott from the office. Yeah, just completely tone deaf to everything that's going on, and that got passed. Somebody read that. Maybe it was one per. Maybe just one person read that, right? And then passed it on and said, "Congrats, yep, boom," and signed off. But somebody read that, man, and you just can't do that. Uh, their statement was as follows, though. If you wanna, their statement. We're incredibly sorry. There's no something. shit, Cello. <laughs> Adidas said in a statement to USA Today Sports, clearly there was no thought given to the insensitive email subject line we sent Tuesday. Uh, we deeply apologize for our mistake. The Boston Marathon is one of the most inspirational sporting events in the world. Every year we're reminded of the hope and resiliency of the running community at this event. I've tried to talk to Dan about this. He's got some past and understanding of what goes on in these meetings. And, and what I take from it is just there's so many people out of touch with what the hell is going on, making decisions to sell to people. And I get it, they're not, part of these people, their job is not to understand uh, what kind of political conversation is going on because a lot of brands before Donald Trump would often try to stay away from it and then what you have yeah, now is a lot true. of brands more often than not are dragged into politics because there's no way of avoiding it now. <laughs> they literally need to make a choice at times. Whoa. But it's just like with what happened with Pepsi as well, um, as I'm sure the memes consist, which we'll get to in a minute, I just wanted to stress like what point in this conversation is there a voice of someone who perhaps has some understanding of the event that's going on. So when you have your topic at the top of the, uh, the whiteboard, I would imagine saying, okay, our, our goal for this is to be inclusive. Uh, well, for Pepsi, first of all, is to oh. try and sell a product uh, by tapping into what is a social trend, right? Mm. And then from that, someone steps up and goes, well, people are protesting a lot these days. And they're like, ah, social trend. It's a cool thing to go out and protest. And I'm not saying that people don't do that. People do probably go to protests to take a quick selfie and show that they're being active. But there's a lot of people that are doing it because it's a cause in which they believe in. Specifically, when you zone in on police brutality, which I imagine was the idea of the commercial. They're like, oh, we'll just give them a Pepsi. Cops are not racist anymore. And everyone gets happy, goes on. They've got a sugar rush. Then it plummets. The cops go back to being racist. No, but this is what their idea I think was. So at what point is there someone in the room, and I'm just gonna state this, a person of color who perhaps understands the situation that's going on, are they even being heard? Are they even going, like, cause I'm, imagine if you are someone of color and you understand the situation that's going on, specifically with Pepsi, you're like, by the way, that's pretty distasteful. It's not gonna fit. You don't have to be a person of color to fucking know that. No, I get it, but, but there is a lot of people out of touch <laughs> you don't with have it. To be, you don't have to be a, a survivor of the Boston Marathon to sit there and go, Hey, I think that's a really bad subject line for an email. But what I'm saying but is- a lot, a lot of the time, I th here's what I think. I think that a lot of it is going unmonitored. I think that, I think there's an old form of marketing and a new form of marketing, right? I think the old form of marketing was, was boardrooms, meetings, pitches, ideas, collaborative workspaces with tons and tons of people and a, a actual structured order of things. But at new media, it's quantity. It's this and that and this and that. As much as we can get out as possible. So I actually think that there wasn't a boardroom of people. I think that probably it went through one person who wasn't even competent enough or paying attention enough to even put two and two together at the time because I can imagine that Adidas is sending out thousands and thousands of emails a day. Mm -hmm. So my, I, I guess, I, what's the word I'm looking for? View of this is that somebody without a brain goes, uh, the congrats, uh, the, it's a marathon, it's 26.2 miles. Uh, congrats on surviving the Boston Marathon. And then passes it along and says, that's it. If it even has a checks and balances, if it is, they sign on and they go. Mm. I don't think it's coming up, in a, I don't think it was like a, a boardroom situation because you'd have to believe, you have to hold out some kind of hope that if there's like eight people involved in that, Jesus Christ, all eight should be fired. 
Yeah. They're incompetent in, in doing those things. And look, and people say it's it's selective outrage. You're getting mad about the Boston Marathon slogan. I don't see it that way. I look at it as a big picture thing because look at stuff like Pepsi is doing the same shite different day. Yeah. Um, uh, United is really handling it well. <laughs> They're still hiring a PR guy if anybody's interested in taking that grenade. Yeah. Um, here you go, sir. Just make a statement and everything will be fine. Bring your knuckle dusters on the flight. Everything will be fine. Nobody will be there to support you, <laughs> but just uh, bring, bring, bring your knuckle dusters. I think uh, with most of these positions, especially with marketing and like social media outreach, it's most of the time like there's a millennial somewhere involved in that process, someone fresh out of college. This, the word survived is so specific to me. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of executive that was like, uh, we need a new ad uh, to send out for all the Boston Marathon finishers. Mm -hmm. Like you said, uh, do all the work and you're gonna get none of the credit for it, Thompson. Thompson was like, all right, you fucking piece of shit. All right, all right I got you. Uh, yeah, uh, your name's going on this, not mine, right? I'm just the intern, cool. I feel like, I, congrats, you survived is too specific. If it was, I feel like it was tongue in, I feel like it was tongue in cheek done by someone to like throw someone else under the bus. Cause that's that's. Could have been. I have a hard time believing that eight, like you said, a boardroom yeah, of eight like, a, adults all, with IQs over a grapefruit were like, yeah. Do uh, we have a boardroom of like good. ten people discussing like our our email thread? Do we have do, do we have that here? I don't think any digital company or new media company is in that form of marketing. I think it's I think it's like, Dan. You worked in this for I years. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, specific. Right. It's our company, but look, I like the baby pictures. They're very cute. Um, and then at least, <laughs> congrats, employee A, for surviving giving birth. Yeah. <laughs> it's but never the I'm subject gonna, line gonna, of our I'm gonna email. be that guy here. I, it's I, 2017, it's like hard not to have a baby at this point. Yeah, it's like true. medical science is pretty on point. We lose like one out of 7,000 babies now. Yeah, dude, it's, <laughs> it's not that impressive That was a anymore. common cause of death like 350 years ago. Yeah. But uh, it does tie in, Francis too, uh, uh, look, I think that the United memes were great, and I really wanted to share some of them with you uh, because, in terms of bad brands, or at least brands going through a rough spot, and of course they can bounce back and probably will. I think Adidas is going anywhere. I don't know if I really. I'm going to go out on a limb. I, you, I know we talked about it after United, and you said most people go out and buy cheaper tickets. Well, we did the show in the main show yesterday, and it's there's actually surveys that are going around that people are paying more just to deliberately not. Yeah, uh, show up with United. Unfortunately, I got people like my parents who go, no, fuck that, it's cheaper to fly. Yeah, of course, it will be, so but. I, no, F that, you can't curse. No, uh, yeah, I get it. Uh, and one last point before we get to the humorous side is that I'm always looking at things on a macro level, and I always look at, like, well, okay, what's the. I like to think that sometimes it's just human error and it's one off and people are just being idiotic, but it does happen quite a lot, and it's in. When you look at United and the way that they dealt with the situation and the fact that it took them three apologies to even kind of come close to taking any sort of accountability. I just think about it as like the disconnect between big companies and everyday people and they claim that they're for you, but they're not. And they don't have any real uh, idea as to what is actually going on in the real world and all they care about is their bottom line and that's why like for instance, like in a Wells Fargo financial crisis, it's always passed down, the blame goes down, goes down. Oh, it's the actual, the guy that sold you the mortgage the first time, he's to blame for you, it's not. The accountability of what's his name, John Stump, who Elizabeth Warren just I, uh, took to the absolutely look, just you're talking to the hiding. Biggest, you're talking about the biggest advocate of blame the baby boomers for everything. Yeah, that's true. It's all their fault. They want to blame us for everything, and all we're going to be is one giant circle of blaming yeah. each other for all of the world's problems. Um, I agree with you. I try to see the big picture with these things. Yeah, it's so important. I actually might do a video. I don't know. I think that hey. accountability might be on Adidas. No, just on brands being like they they try to pass off accountability on, on one off situations. When I really just think that they they're full of shit. I, just, I think I just, they I think they just don't understand. You survived the on. Boston Marathon. Here's some clothes you can buy. Yeah, that's just so bad. Man. They're also trying to sell you stuff. Uh, United memes. We got five of them. We'll go through them really quick. I love Fight Club, man. Great movie. But if you're sitting in rows 12 through 24, you better be ready. No yeah. shirt, no shoes to a fight. <laughs> One fight at a time. Uh, Joe Thomas for the Cleveland Browns offensive tackle, having said, uh, quote, having to reaccommodate? That's what we're calling it? Dear United, I had to reaccommodate someone once, and he's uh, stuffing Pittsburgh Steelers defensive end at the time. Uh, good on Joe Thomas. 
Uh, one of my favorite movies ever. Love this. Yeah, favorite movies and definitely the most underrated character in Happy yeah. Gilmore. Let's check out the name tag. I would like to have a, a warm glass of milk before I go to bed. You're gonna have a warm glass to shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. <laughs> I love how nice he is to, uh, to, to have it, to have it when He's it comes like, in. Oh, they do recreational activities. <laughs> they is knitting the. Oh my god, everything's great with that. Next one. Uh, hey, this is um, this is spot on. Uh, hey, at United, because it just shows that they're still incompetent. Hey, at United, I have a lot of miles with you guys. I was seriously wondering if it's transferable to fly someone else, say my ex, in my place. And they respond. Oh my God. Hello, thanks for reaching out. You can transfer miles here. Oh man, they're, some, not, they're not even in on their own. They don't even understand their own joke. So Oh my God. <coughs> somebody said recently, uh, get ready to fly United <laughs> uh, to Guillermo <laughs> from Jimmy Kimmel. I thought the best thing was that there's a lot of people who said like, hey, my ex happens to be, you know, flying seat three B United <laughs> Airline flight UA five one eight. Happening to be need some reaccommodation. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus. By the way, uh, quick note: I, I was in the gym and Guillermo. Is it Guillermo? Is that what you pronounce Guillermo, it? Guillermo. Yeah. Was in the gym. Guillermo's same gym. Yeah. Same gym as me. I wanted to say something, but I didn't. Yes. I think he also was wanting to get my autograph for being on TYT Sports. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely. Huge fan. Big fan. Big fan. Huge fan. Big fan. Huge fan. Don't be Adidas. Yeah. But seriously. Be Nike. Don't be Pepsi. Be Coke. I'm sure both of them will come out with some. They don't have to do anything now. They literally can just be like, Coca-Cola, we ain't Pepsi. <laughs> Nike. I just wanted to remake the Anchorman. I think Wes is just a little upset that he's number two in the ratings again. Yeah. <laughs> I've got your slogan. You Na- Nike, we ain't, we ain't Nike. We like ain't. I would call it. 